I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this episode is being recorded and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Welcome to Can I Get a Refill, the podcast that offers a nurturing and inspirational space for honest and open discussions around career aspirations, wealth creation, motherhood, healthy relationships with others and the self, as well as an emphasis on physical, mental, and spiritual well being. Join us for light hearted, authentic chats with like minded women, as well as more in depth discussions with industry professionals to support your ambitions and heal old wounds, as we empower you to regularly fill up your own cup. I'm your host, Steph Bruno Newton, singer, writer, recovering people pleaser, first time podcast host, and first time mum. Thank you for pressing play today, and now let's get into the episode. We are joined today by a very special and our first male guest on the show, Darren Altclass. Darren is the founder and leader of Why Then How. He is an accomplished business builder and coach with over 25 years of experience. Darren has built businesses in numerous industries and knows firsthand the highs and lows of building a business and what it takes to reach your goals. Darren is currently coaching businesses in hospitality, construction, accounting, professional services, fashion, design, tourism, and health and well-being. Darren is joined by a network of business specialists to help you achieve your goals, as well as being the author of the book, This Way Please, on how to build a brand people love. If you're an aspiring business owner, I know you're going to love this chat. Now let's get into the episode. Welcome back to the Can I Get a Refill podcast. As just promised, we're joined by a very special guest today and our very first male guest, Darren Altclass, business coach and mentor. Darren, thank you so much for being a part of the show today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Today's the first day I'm meeting you, but we came to know each other because my husband, Alan, has just joined you and you're going to coach him for business. So Mm -hmm. very exciting. When he told me, I was like, do it, do it. And we're lower finances at the moment than normal because I'm on maternity leave, but every entrepreneur I listen to all started with some sort of mentor or coach and they all yeah. say they tripled their income or they, I just feel like any investment in yourself yeah. is not a cost, <clears throat> it's an investment. No, totally. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I was super yeah. excited. So I yeah. thought it'd be really good for us to chat. As I said, my recent episodes have been very motherhood based, yeah. <laughs> not something that I usually listen to, but because it's the season of life I'm in, it just made sense. But yeah. I'm very excited to get into this because I'm sort of an aspiring business owner myself. So I thought, and I know a lot of my listeners are, so I thought this yeah. would be super helpful. Sounds good. Yeah. So why don't you just start by telling us a little <clears throat> bit about yourself and the yep. services you offer with your business, which is called Why Then How? Yep, for sure. Look, I grew up in a small business family. It's all I ever knew. It's all my dad ever did. Dad had so What's many dad different do? small businesses. Um, when I was first born, he had mechanic workshops, and so I ended up working in those. Then there were petrol stations, and I worked in those petrol stations. Then he had a vending machine business, so he had vending machines all through Sydney. And that hospitals. was an idea I had yeah. once of having <clears throat> ones with healthy food because every time I'm stuck on a train station, yeah, yeah. I don't eat chips and lollies. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so this, you know, this is going back probably, you know, 35 years. Yeah. So vending machine business, so I'd, you know, go around and refill all those vending machines. You would do it? Um, You'd work yeah, yeah. I worked, awesome. Every business that Dad had, I worked with him. It's all I ever knew. After that, he he had like a antique furniture restoration. Oh, wow. He wanted to, it's kind of, I guess, like a bit of a midlife thing. He sold his businesses. He always wanted to be a French polish. So, oh, so rather a bit than, of a passion project compared to the So others. rather than, you know, going and getting some training ship, he just yeah. bought a business and said to the guy, oh, I'm going to buy this business off you. Yeah. And part of the deal is for three years, you'll train me to be a French polisher. Oh. And then... And then yeah. you're free to go. So that's what happened. And then I worked in that as well. And I learned about antique furniture restoration, selling furniture, because there's also a shop yeah. there in Balmain. So I, I look, I, from an early, early age, it's all over new with small business. Yeah. And I saw the power and the value that small business can bring to a family, yep. to a community and those around. So it's... It was the only thing I really had in my vision. Yeah. Uh, my two sisters who are older than me, they went on and did other kinds of more white-collar careers. Yes. When I was 13, I started my first business. Right. And so you had the entrepreneurial spirit. Well, 
I just wanted to do something and take control yep. of my destiny. So, and I saw it's that. It's just nice to have that freedom and not answer to people, right? Even that's though it's right. more of a hustle. Yeah, yeah. That, that's right. So, I didn't really have, other than a whole lot of little skills that I learned from working in my dad's business. I looked around, I looked in the garage and there was a lawnmower and a shovel and a few, so I thought, all right, I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm. So I went and started a lawn mowing, gardening, landscaping business. So I just got some cards. I actually found the the cards, the business cards the other day and showed my kids. Oh, I hope you keep them all. (coughs) I would keep everything, yeah. yeah. Pretty funny. Uh, And so I just would do that. So I started lawn mowing, landscaping, gardening, and I just kind of got people that were further advanced than me in those things to teach me. And yeah. so I did that and did that for, you know, a year and a bit, two years, and then I sold that business when I was about 15. When you were 15? Yeah, and then <laughs> and then I was like, I was done with school. Everyone was working in Maccas. Yeah, I was done with school. And I was in year nine and I just said to Dad, I can't do I can't do this. It's like I just can't fit into that system. Like mm-hmm. I can't learn that way. Um, I was a good student, but I was disruptive because mm. I just couldn't sit there and just listen. Well, Richard Branson's <coughs> principal said to him, you're either going to be a billionaire or in prison. <laughs> and yeah. It's that if it, school doesn't work for you, you're probably an entrepreneurial <coughs> Yeah, and I loved learning and so I was, I was frustrated. Hmm. Um, so Dad said, look, the only way you, you're going to leave school in year nine is if you get an apprenticeship. Mm. So that's when I kind of moved the business on. And I got apprenticeship. The first apprenticeship I found, I got apprenticeship as a chef. So I did that for like a decade. Yeah. And then I started some hospitality businesses. You know, there was, you know, restaurant kind of catering. Like I had a, a not like a nightclub, but like a performance venue. Oh, wow. Lots of different things. That's when my kids were born. Yeah. We're running a, you know, so we'd have the kids in like bassinets and that. Yep. In the kitchen, asleep yep. while we were running a bar and my wife was at the bar and I was serving or in the kitchen cooking or whatever. And then You just make it work. Yeah, we, yeah. Just, made, we just made it work. And then after that, uh, I wanted to get experience building bigger businesses because mine were always kind of small, a few people. Yeah. So I started a, like a brand agency and so we had, that was, and we did that for nine years. So it was design, websites. This is before, you know, there was lots of different opportunities for people to build their own websites. So the only option yes. if you wanted a website, you had to have coders and designers. and Yeah, it's a little bit easier now with like right. Squarespace. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, none of that existed. So mm. we did apps and we did lots of marketing. And wow. But then I wanted to kind of con- be, do more consulting. So in that business, I started consulting, which led me to some really good relationships with some bigger businesses yeah and so then I went what they call client side and I worked on with them building their businesses and I that was a I probably learned more then than I did running my own businesses mm. and then in the last few years I've exited myself out of all every single business I've been part of and now just do business coaching great um yeah so it's Pass, kind of full passing circle. on the baton right like passing on yeah. your pearls of wisdom and I feel like everything that has transpired in my life has brought me to this moment mm. So I'm calmer, I'm more relaxed, hopefully more wiser, Mm -hmm. um, disseminate information better, learn not to fuss over things that aren't important. So, like, I feel like at this time in my life I am in the right place and I love helping business owners to literally change their lives through business. Because the the three things, when I ask business owners, you know, what what do you want more of? Mm. It's always the same three. They want more money. First of all, they say they want more money. Mm. Second of all, they say they want more time. Mm. And third, they say they want more achievement or purpose. Yeah. Sense of purpose is something yeah. that always yeah. comes up. Hence yeah. why I was doing a podcast for yeah. maternity leave when I yeah. shouldn't be resting. But yeah. I like to have yeah. a purpose. I like to feel fulfilled from something. Yeah. But time is number one for me, I'm yeah. going to say. <laughs> and for different people at different times in life, money might be the more important thing, mm-hmm. time or achievement. But look, I, if you fix the money piece... You can achieve time. You get time and time helps you to focus on purpose. Well, I completely agree with that. And years ago people would talk about, you know, money's evil and that's where people have those poor money mindsets. But it's not. It allows you the opportunities to do what you I think the love of money. Well, that's great, yeah. And and this is how I view money in business. Use it as a tool. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is how I view money in business. If you think of your business as a, a car... Money is the petrol to get you into the destination. So it's the destination that is the most important thing. I love analogies. That's a very good analogy. And that's where the that last kind of sense of achievement or purpose comes Mm. in. So I I don't like working with business owners who just want to get more money. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not really that interested in helping them just get more money. Yeah. But if I can turn that into 
house is going to serve the goal of your life, what is the goal of your life, the yeah. purpose of your life. So, But it's always those three things and you can never do one without the other, money, time, achievement. And what I found is that most business owners have a lack of those three things. Yeah. They feel like they've got a lack of money. They might have a lot of turnover. They might have like a lot of money coming through, millions of dollars coming through, but they always say they don't have any money. It's not in my pocket. It's not in my bank. Where is it? My accounting software says I've got this much profit. Where is it? So yeah. one of the first things I like to do is help people understand money, help them understand the difference between, I know this sounds so basic, but the difference between revenue and profit but we didn't have financial literacy. Yeah. I knew nothing until I met yeah. Alan and he yeah. started. That's not something that was taught in school. We were taught Pythagoras' theorem, which I have mm. never used in my yeah. adult life. That's interesting, though, <coughs> that you talk about those top three because I know, not personally, but you see a lot of people who they say they're successful but they're yeah. financially successful but yeah. they might be unsuccessful in relationships or health or, right. you know, yeah. that, that sense of fulfilment and creativity. Yeah. So it's nice to yeah. – I'm working towards – Having that balance, and especially now as a mum, I want that time to spend with Leo and I yeah. want the time to be creative yeah. as well as having revenue coming in. Before we move on, I thought that was really interesting, the businesses you were talking about with your father. Do you know yeah. Cody Sanchez? Who no. Online, I'll send you some links. She yeah. talks about, well, I recently unfollowed her on Instagram because she has a lot of Trump content, but her oh, business yeah. strategies, her YouTube videos are great. Yeah. And she talks about going sometimes she will buy – already operating businesses like if someone's retiring she bought a laundromat was her first yeah. business and she yeah. buys it off them because they're retiring yeah. but she's saying how a lot of people will go for the glamorous businesses when it's the unglamorous ones like the car washers and Alan owns a cleaning business that yeah. are very yeah. very profitable and yeah. people are scared to look at those things because they don't think it's as glamorous so I thought that was interesting the way yeah. your, your dad started. Dad was all about business rather than what the business was he started hmm. with his craft and that was being a mechanic mm -hmm. that was the place to start but then he learned the art of business yeah which is more powerful than learning a trade. Absolutely but Sounds we'll talk about well more about that later. Certainly uh, what percentage of businesses fail in the first 12 months and what are some of the biggest mistakes they're making? Look uh, the last statistics that I read like I'm not an expert on this was that in the first three years mm -hmm. in Australia six out of ten businesses fail. Six out of ten. Okay. That's in the first three years. In the first year it's 33 mm -hmm. percent. That changes from time to time and and the reason that they they always give, and it's true, the number one reason is always cash flow. Okay. And, and that's essentially running out of oxygen. Is it a lack of planning, do yeah. you think, so, a lack of research? Well, I'm going to go into the reason behind the reason in a sec, but yeah. they always give you the the main reason is cash flow, and cash flow is just more money going out than coming in. And while that business might be profitable in the long run, the owner, the founder doesn't have enough funds to mm. see them through to that point. Mm. Most businesses are not profitable from day one. Yeah. So it's usually a timing thing. Some businesses, you know, shouldn't exist because they've mm. got a wrong product market fit, which is another reason why businesses fail, lack of planning, wrong location, wrong yeah. timing. The technology might be too new. Okay. Um, There's a whole lot, but it always comes back to this one point, cash flow. Mm. But I'm not satisfied with that answer. Uh, I don't think it's very helpful. So what I like to do is look for the reason behind the reason. Mm -hmm. And the reason behind the reason, here's my take on it. Business owners usually are good at their craft. Okay. So they're a creator or an artist. So they're a baker or they're a landscaper or they're you know, a chef or they're a hairdresser or they're um, an accountant. They're, they're good at their art, their craft. That's usually at most businesses. Start. You mentioned some people will buy an existing business. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a little bit different. But the majority of business owners started with their craft mm -hmm. and their focus is on perfecting that craft. Then the next thing that they, they have to learn is operators. So the first hat that you, they will often wear is the, the creator hat. And then they have to learn how to be an operator because they have to learn how to do that consistently and deliver that to the market and maybe get a few other people to help them do that. So they, they, they take their, you know, creator hat, their artist hat off and put their operator hat on. Mm -hmm. Usually they're the two hats that they wear. Mm. But in order to be successful in business, you have to be successful with in business skills. So the next hat that they need to wear that most don't wear is the owner hat. Yeah. And the owner hat is all about working on the business, not working in the business. You've heard that a thousand times. So it's all about them helping their team grow at their skills, uh, building the right strategy, building systems, building yep. culture, then getting a dashboard 
where all the right metrics are there so they can gauge where they're at. Yeah. You don't get in a car in Sydney and drive to Queensland without understanding how many tanks of petrol it's going to take yeah. to get there. And as you're driving, you look at the fuel gauge. Yeah. Businesses need a fuel gauge. They need a dashboard. Most business owners or 100% of the business owners that I coach never had a dashboard when we started. Yeah, motivation and inspiration and creativity are a great place to start, yeah. but they can't run a business. And I'm yeah. seeing a lot of, you know, like wellness companies and that the people who start them are very creative people, but that doesn't yeah. mean they have the skills to run a business. And I'm seeing <clears throat> right. people... And no one's taught them. Yeah, and I'm seeing yeah. people... The delegation is very yeah. important. I think Elon Musk talked about, I don't need to learn to do that. I'll hire someone to yeah. do that. So yeah. I'm seeing a lot of creative business owners hire a general manager or someone, you know, an HR, someone who can run mm. those day-to-day things that yeah. A, they might not have time for and B, they're just not skilled at and I think there's nothing wrong with that it doesn't mean you failed it means that that's your time then to be creative and do what you do best yeah yeah look no no one has taught them how to do business and even if they did go and do a degree at university it doesn't really train you in wearing the the owner hat yeah and the mistake that the operator makes is that they think if they just work harder Mm. and better that that equates to more money, mm. but it doesn't. No. It I equates to more stress mm. and mm. broken relationships. And this is where I come in as a business coach is to say, look, this, this is the new hat that we need to wear. You're no longer a chef. You're not wearing a chef hat. You're wearing a business hat. But once we get the business humming along right, you can go put that chef hat back on whenever you like, mm. by choice, not by need. Yeah. So some business owners choose to go back and just wear the creator hat. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. But if no one is wearing the owner hat in the business, the business will not last. comes back to the cash flow issue. The reason behind the reason is because business owners stay in those first two hats, the creator hat or the operator hat. They never put the owner hat on. The last hat, four hats, that you need to wear is the investor hat. And the investor hat removes themselves out of the business and they don't really work in the business at all anymore, but it's all about accountability, long-term planning and risk assessment. Mm -hmm. And so that's if you build a business big enough that has a board, that's what the board function does. Yes. So it's either a board or investor hat, but because we're talking about small businesses, the hat that you really should finish with is the investor hat. Mm. And that's about mitigating risk, making sure that that the company is saving money properly. The last business that I was involved in before COVID, for six years before COVID, we had been building a war chest Mm. for something. We might have invested in something, we might have bought something, we might have, whatever it was, but we invested in that. We saved money. Mm. When I was uh, a kid in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a system called the money bags Mm -hmm. system. You've probably seen this in the Barefoot Investor, if you've read the Barefoot Investor. Mm. That's just to take on money bags right. program his, in the 70s buckets. and 80s, which is these buckets. Yep. You would get envelopes delivered to your home and those envelopes would have the different things written on it. And so you put money into different envelopes and you use because everything was cash in that point. Yeah, um, my first job was yeah. the cash in a little <coughs> yellow envelope. <laughs> yeah, so that was the early kind of idea, the seeding idea of the, you know, Scott Pape. Mm. bucket system or you, there's a, a very popular book called Profit First which is about business which is about putting profit away first. Okay. Because we, we we did that when COVID happened, business went really down mm. and if we didn't have that bucket, mm. we wouldn't have survived. Mm-hmm. So this is what I'm talking about wearing the investor hat by looking ahead and thinking something's going to happen either an opportunity or... And that's planning. Yeah, it's either yeah. going to be an opportunity. It's just, it's planning, but it's also about developing habits. Okay. Yeah, it, it's more about having a strategy, having a plan, but the owner and the investor makes sure that there are habits. Like you've heard the difference between goals and habits. Like two teams go and play a game, both teams have the same goal to win. But only one team wins because they had better habits mm. leading up to that game. I'm going to be doing a habit stacking yeah. episode. Yeah. That's really, really important and yeah. the most successful people do that. Yeah. So that's what the owner investor will do, make sure that the right behaviours, habits, culture yeah. is there. Um, so there's the four Culture is a very important word. Now, when you were talking yeah. before about if an owner does everything, they become very stressed. Now, I have from all the companies I've worked at, I have this theory that the, the culture trickles <clears> down from the top. And if it's stressed or if yeah. it's... 
everyone's feeling that stress. Yeah, so culture is def- definitely important and hiring yeah. the right people, that adds to it. So, yeah, planning yeah. is definitely the main thing there. Yeah. They say you need to spend money to make money and I yeah. personally believe, as I said, that investing in yourself is the best place to spend. Yeah. Why do you think business owners need to invest in coaching or mentoring? Look, look, it comes back to those hats really essentially is – that if you don't learn how to wear those other hats, then your business is going to be at risk. Mm. Your life is going to be at risk, not in a health, well, maybe a health because you're stressed, but yeah, relationships. One of the things that I find, whether it's a male or a female owner, their relationships are often stressed mm. with their kids or their partner. Having a coach helps you to learn the art of business, how to become a, a better business person, not just a better creator or a better artist. And you don't know what you don't know. That's so it's right. Good to get someone who's an expert in that field. And what a coach also helps you do is help you make decisions based on logic, not emotion. Ah, because we look at I data. Struggle to do that. <laughs> yeah, everyone struggles to do that. Okay. I struggle to do that in my own businesses. Right? Okay. So, because it's yours, <clears throat> it's exactly. your baby. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. And so, a coach will help you learn to wear those hats, learn those business skills, learn to build the right dashboard, to learn what key KPIs, what numbers you need to look at what numbers are not important to forecast a little bit and to make sure you, that you run the business. So a business coach will help you to learn how to grow as a business person, not just as the creator. Okay. To make decisions based on logic, not based on emotion. Emotion is the enemy of business. Oh, right. You know? Okay. Yeah, emotion, 100%. You will find all successful business owners have a coach. Mm. Or someone in their lives that helps them think through a board. That's what the board. The board yes. doesn't have emotion. The investor doesn't have emotion. Yes. The investor will not invest in an idea that makes them feel good. They invest in an idea that has data, mm. logic, planning, strategy, runs on the board, mm. right? So Because emotion, I guess, can cloud your judgment on some decisions. Always, like you might want to always. be d- doing something or creating a product that is yeah. personally important yeah. to you, but, it, you know, pe- there might not be a market for it. That's right. So if you come with gut instinct or intuition about something, that's great, mm. but let's take it to the next level and build some data okay. around that. If, if you think of successful people in any area of life, in sports, they all have coaches. They have strength coaches. They have defence coaches, attack coaches, yes. mind coaches, health coaches, whatever. There's more at risk in business. If business, if you lose at business, there is way more at risk than if you lose a game. Mm. You can lose a yes. home. Yes, yeah. You can lose a family. I, I've lost a home mm. oh, in the okay. past. I hear a lot of from, successful people yeah. state, say that. They mortgage their house to fund their business. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's common. And it's because it's based on making decisions by emotion. I know I don't really need someone to tell me what I already know. Yeah. Well, it's never true. No matter what level of business yes. you're at, that is never, ever That's true. That's the ego. That is the ego. Yeah. And so like any successful person – there's always some kind of coach or mentor or guide somewhere in the picture. Mm. I think every single business owner needs a coach, not because I'm trying to get more clients, because that will help make you more successful as a well, business owner. Well, the proof owner. is in the pudding and you've seen it happen. It takes stress away. Um, well, let's go back to those three things, money, time, achievement. Over the last decade, I have a 100% success rate. Mm-hmm with the people I coach in those three areas. That's pretty good. They get more money, they get more time, they get more achievement. In the first month of coaching, if I see that they just think this is a silver bullet and they don't want to do the hard work of growing mm. and learning, then we have to stop because it's not going to work. Okay. It's not a silver bullet. They have to work. You can't just book a, a membership at a gym and never go. It's the same with coaching. Yep. Yeah. So it's all about growth and personal growth so and consistency do you think as well oh consistency is key turning up is mm. yeah because you know, the gym membership people can buy it but if you're not going that's right <laughs> it's not do anything. turning up and like yeah. i find this with marketing all the time people try something in marketing and oh, it doesn't work and they stop and try something new yeah and how you see you know? people who succeed with social media it's just that <clears throat> consistency that's right yeah. yeah how do you know it didn't work you only tried it for yeah <laughs> exactly yeah yeah so there's no this is the thing i guess now as opposed to 30 years ago it does take longer in my perspective to get successful at business mm. but you have to be willing to just put in that, believe in yourself, invest in yourself, grow. Yeah. And if that business fails, take the lessons and go into the next thing. Mm. Don't overextend yourself. Don't take stupid risks. 
Well, it's interesting you say that. I feel like all the really successful people I listen to, it's their second or third business that succeeds. Oh, probably the eighth or ninth oh, really? or tenth. Yeah, probably. Jane Liu, who owns Shopo, is, you know, she grew up in Western Sydney. She was going to uni, I think, for a finance degree. She quit her job, and I love this story because I actually did this once. Yeah. And she didn't want to tell her parents, so she used to get dressed every day and pretend she was going to work. I did that with Alan when I left her toxic wow. job, and I got dressed every day because I didn't want to worry about the money. She is worth multi, multi millions. She's just posted a video on Instagram of taking her whole family overseas, first class in Singapore. I wow. mean, the huge, huge success. Yeah. And someone wrote something like, oh, please don't brag. Um, Shut the fuck up. That's not bragging. That's being yeah. proud of your achievements. Great. Yeah. That's inspiring. That's yeah. aspiring yeah. to me. I like to see that. Yeah. But she talks quite candidly about a business she had just before that was similar that yeah. failed. But I think it's probably important because you're learning the lessons and what didn't work and failure is a part of that success. It's not yeah. – I reference this constantly but I always talk about WD-40 stands for water displacement 40th attempt. So they had yeah. 39 attempts that yeah. they didn't fail yeah. but they learned each time that didn't work, that didn't work until they That's perfected right. it. You only fail if you Stop. make the same mistake three or four times. Yeah, it's true. Well, Sometimes it's insanity, good to stop. Right? Sometimes it's like stop, regather, think about you know, yeah. the next thing. But um, Well, that's pause. <coughs> that's yeah. pause. Pause yeah. is good yeah. and rest is productive. What are the best pieces of advice you've been given or that you can give to our listeners today? Look, I, I think I, it's a great question and I, I try to – I'm going to talk about three things if that's okay. Yeah. I try to read less but go deeper in what I read. Okay. So I'll read a book three, four, five, six times. I do that too. Um, I still read a lot and I listen to a lot of audio, but I used to ha- have this thing where I read a book a week and I'd take it done. But, but I'd rather w- read three books for the rest of my life and do 50% of what those books recommend. And implement. That's Was right. Was it you that said that to me on the phone or someone else recently? Maybe. There's a lot of people that will just listen to things, listen to audio books, yeah. listen to podcasts. Yeah. And it's almost like they're yeah. ticking off. I've done that. Yeah, I've done that. Exactly, but if yeah. you're not implementing, it's kind of just entertainment. <laughs> That's it's right. not. It's not yeah. useful. Yeah, I'd rather my uh, clients who I'm coaching to just to read one book for a year mm. and implement twenty, thirty percent of what that book is suggesting, and then your life will change. Yeah. But reading a book a week or a book a month it takes a while to implement things into your business. Well, it's overwhelming too, yeah. like to absorb all that. It yeah. can just be a yeah. lot of words floating around in your head. So my first – exactly. My first point is read less, act more. Mm. The second thing that I just follows me my whole life is uh, listen first, speak second. I know your parents have probably said that to you, but Steve Covey, great author, Seven Habits. I know Alan's reading Seven Habits mm-hmm. at the moment. One of the chapters – is seek first to understand before seeking to be understood. Mm. It's another way of saying listen first, speak second. Mm-hmm. So I think as a business owner, employer, managing staff, having a wife, kids, it's a principle that goes across everything. Mm. Ask good questions, listen to understand, don't listen to respond, and then speak. I have done that my whole life yeah. and any listener of this will hear me and I jump in not to be rude, but because I'm excited and I of want course. to add to that. Yeah. But there have been times when I've played it back and cringed yeah. going, oh, Steph, you yeah. really just yeah. jumped in there. And I do have a few people in my life that I say, are you listening to hear me or are you just waiting? And you can see their eyes glass yeah. over like they're not actually listening, they're just preparing what they're going to say next. So that's yeah. something that I, I catch myself now and try to absorb more. Yeah. And and I think in today's society because everyone's so used to quick seven second TikTok videos, they've got a shorter attention span. And I think sitting with eye contact is the most respectful thing you can do yeah. to another person. I think people also fear that they're going to lose what they were going to say. Oh, yes, yeah. especially when you're a sleep-deprived mum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely a fear. So that I th- so the first thing, read less, act more. The second thing, seek to understand before seeking to be understood, mm-hmm. which is, you know, listen for speak second. And I always ask the people I'm coaching, who in a conversation do you think has the more influence, the person speaking or the person listening, the person speaking or the person asking the questions? Mm -hmm. It's always the person asking the question has the most influence. Okay. Ask the questions, you're listening, ask another question, ask another question, ask another question, Mm -hmm. develop your understanding and soon you will know how to, that door's open 
whether if this is a sales conversation, I'm trying to sell you something. Mm. If I'm just talking, you've got the power. You've got the influence in the conversation. Mm-hmm. So when I do sales training, it's always ask good questions, listen, make eye contact, mm. reflect back to them, make them feel heard, make them feel listened. Engage. Engage. Mm. And then you have more influence on that conversation. Then you've got them. Yes. And I'm, just, and and I'm always talking me- about yeah. I hate talking at people yeah. instead of I love when people talk to me. I hate when people talk at me and that's yeah. something that you yeah. know, always happened when you were a kid. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, And I'm not suggesting this because it's about manipulating the moment to get what you need or what, what you want. It's a very wise principle yeah. across. And look, um, sales is the goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And with staff too, asking, you can tell a staff member you need to perform better. Yeah. But you're better off asking a whole lot of questions and you're leading them to the moment where they understand that they need to perform better mm. and they're taking ownership of that. Yeah. So that's the second skill. The third which is my favourite, which is why I left it to the end. And if every person did this, the world would be so much of a better place. Is that everyone has an invisible sign hanging around their neck saying, make me feel important. Ah. Oh. Yeah. If you go into life, every interaction, whether it's a stranger, mm. your wife, your husband, your kids, your business partner, your staff, you go into every conversation looking around their neck and saying, there's a sign, saying make me feel important, Mm. you'll move ahead positively in 100% of the situations. I love that. I think that is so important and that's something that I've learned too as I've grown older, why being heard is so important. And if I've ever been in circles where my voice isn't heard, that relationship isn't going to last because you don't feel important. Yeah. Everyone wants to feel important. You know when they talk about angry teens that yeah. are acting out, it's really because they're saying, please love me, please yeah. make me feel valued and yeah. important. Everyone wants to feel important, everyone. Now, yeah. these three things, I don't do them all the time. Mm. You know, life gets in the way, I get tired. You know, if my kids listen to this podcast, they will go, oh, wonderful advice, Dad, why don't you have it for yourself? We're all learning oh, that, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'm great at doling out advice that I think it's a struggle for but, me to you know, take. Life is difficult for all of us mm. and we always get in our own way and I would hate to live with myself. I'd hate to have a clone of me and be <laughs> married to that person. I just said you horrible. have to have the yin and yang. Mm, you can't have horrible. two of the same personality types. No, it'd be horrible. <laughs> so I'm saying this and I'm learning and reminding myself as we talk about these, but those three things I think are really, really important, the last one in particular. Yeah. yeah. Let me jump in there real quick. Um, there's a photo of a gentleman behind you, one of my good friends, Alan Katzman. is a 64-year-old man who was the logistics manager of a beauty company I worked at. Yeah. He taught me a lesson that was very, very valuable. So firstly, what I'm learning now is to ask questions because yeah. I, I find with confidence I ask questions. Years ago I always used to say if I didn't get a joke I would laugh along and now I'll say I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. you explain it? Yeah. And I found real power with yeah, that. Yeah, and oh, it's definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. listen. And ask questions. But the third one was put your hand up when you make a mistake. And yeah. stra- this is what Alan yeah. taught me. And yeah. straight away. Yeah. Now, I have a perfectionist personality, a people pleaser personality. It was something that I grew up I'm, I'm recovering people pleaser. But yeah. that's something that yeah. I always grew up in that I wasn't valuable unless yeah. I did a great job. Yeah. And if I stuffed up, I failed. So I would work hard at hiding anything I did wrong and because f- it I might feel shame. Yeah, and one of the yeah. things I'm growing older again is learning to sit in the uncomfortable. That's something that I'm seeing a psychologist. Yeah. That's something we're working with, sitting yeah. in the uncomfortable. Yes, yeah. Because it passes. Everything yeah. passes. Yeah. And that was one of the most valuable lessons he taught me. And, I, I, you know, I've trained some girls at work and I hope I've passed that on too. And every single time that happens, because you're human, you yeah. can make oh, exactly. a mistake. That's yeah. vulnerability. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Do you think that that's a really important oh. lesson? Totally, for life. Mm. You know, um, just having a bit of humility and, and understanding that it's not – you're enough. Yes, yeah. Right, you're enough. Yeah. A, as you are. You don't so have to be perfect. Let's, let's move on from that. Yes. And just, you know, get, get on. I um, recently oh, – I think it was recently – um, my kids always pull me up on when I say recently. Yeah, it might Dad, have been that wasn't six recently. Years ago. That was like <laughs> two years ago. I watched an interview with Jim Carrey. Mm. Uh, pretty funny, pretty pretty funny guy. Yeah. And he just said, "I'm like in the peak of his career." He said, "I'm retiring." And the interviewer was like, "Why are you retiring?" And he said, "Because I had to come to the realization that I have enough and I am enough." 
Oh, I love that. Yeah. What a line. Yeah. I have enough and I am enough. Yeah. So I've got nothing left to prove. Uh, to prove to myself. I, yeah. I am enough, I have enough, and I'm going to do the things that I love. Oh, I love that. And then I'm feeling like I'm going to contribute something else to the world. And I that really struck home to me the whole not that I have enough, but that I am enough is probably the more powerful thing, which is you Absolutely. just hit on that right there. As, yeah. yeah. It's funny, yeah. and I sort of hitting harder as a mum because I'm always about striving. I've got to do the next thing. I remind myself of the puppy that when you come home they show you the toy they've yeah. got. Like I'm always yeah. trying to show, look at my accolades, look yeah, at what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I do like to feel yeah. like I have a sense of purpose, but – now with Leo, I'm like, you know, I think I'm just going to take a break. And I think, you know, over December, I think I'm just going to stop recording for a while and yeah. be in the moment. Yeah. And that's hard for me yeah. to feel like, am I important if I'm not creating something? And it's really a lesson that I'm really trying to learn. And, yeah. and that's part of being in the moment. It's yeah. funny you mentioned Jim Carrey. I hear him constantly in yeah. um, interviews and, and audiobooks. Because he's a really good manifester. He had written yes, himself yeah, that $10 million yeah. check and then yeah. later he got exactly a $10 million check. But then he sort of went the other way where he yeah. said, I wish people knew that it did, the money actually didn't bring me joy. It didn't, <laughs> exactly. it didn't help my mental health. It, it was a, a, yeah. He achieved his goal, which yeah. is great, but that's yeah. probably part of why he wanted to take a step back. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. And I, a, a while ago I read this book um, by Alan de, po- de Botton, I think that's how you pronounce it. Mm. He, he wrote books like The Architecture of Happiness. and Oh, I've heard of it. Yeah. Um, it. It's a, they're very difficult books to read. He is a very philosophical, deep thinker and yeah. his books are very technical. They're worth the work of reading it. Eckhart Tolle was like that for me. Yeah. It, when I first started reading it, I didn't get it at all. But then when yeah. it was the right time in my life, it made yeah. sense. So, yeah. yeah. I can't remember if it was in The Architecture of Happiness. I think it was at the very beginning, I think the first sentence is there, there are only two stories in the world. Humans are driven by two stories, mm-hmm. the desire to love and the desire to be loved. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's I – mean, he's coming from a very philosophical point, which is what we're talking about right now. Yeah. It's the – everyone has um, the invisible sign hanging around their neck, um, yeah. making me feel important. Yeah. The Jim Carrey, I am enough, your example, our gentleman behind yep. you, his advice. <laughs> yeah. It's – and I think as a business, we're coming, you know, drawing all this back to business. Yeah. As a business owner, even if you're the only person in the business, you're always going to interact with other humans, whether oh. they're your customers. Relationships whether they're are in su- every area. They're yeah. a customer, they're a supplier, they're a staff member. Mm. If you drive your business with that, mm. you'll always be successful and you'll always have people wanting to work with you to help achieve that dream. Which is why EQ is so important, yeah. relationships are important, yeah. and not burning bridges because you never yeah. know when you'll cross paths with yeah. that person again. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And, and money, again, yeah. is is very important as a tool. It's yeah. a resource, yeah. like tap water. It's yeah. a resource to yeah. get to what you want. But if you're driven by just the cash, yeah. like someone like Donald Trump or someone might be, how successful are you in all areas of your life? That's, yeah, yeah, that's very important. Seeing as we were talking about books, which books or podcasts have inspired you that you would recommend to aspiring business owners? Okay. I'm driven, when I'm looking for books to read for myself now and, and books that I want to recommend to my client, it's more about timeless principles than inspiration. There's a lot of books out there, business inspiration, and we've all read them. But with that in mind, I, I look for books that probably a little bit harder to read but have more timeless uh, business principles or life principles. And so oh, I find Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hills, like right. that. It, it can exactly. be old and yeah. dated and very yeah. male, yeah. but the, the, the principles seem to never date. De- definitely. Mm. So timeless principles is what I'm looking at. So okay. with that in mind, um, anything by Jim Collins, anything that Jim Collins has written is worth reading, in particular Good to Great and Built to Last. Okay. Fantastic. There's audio books you can listen about. Those two books in particular, I think there's another one that he's just brought out recently. They're all worth reading Great. ten times. Great. Ten times. My oh, favourite books yeah. I do reread yeah. like once yeah. a year or re-listen to. On yeah. Audio. If, I, if, there was, if I had to only read one author for the rest of my life for business, it would be Jim Collins. Okay. Then there's a, another guy called Keith Cunningham, The Road Less Stupid. He, he, he's hilarious. He, he's such a down-to-earth, black and white. He's very American. Like he talks <laughs> very slowly. So I did the audio book and I had to put it at one point. Speed it up. Speed. <laughs> and even then it felt – my uh, wife was like, wow, this guy talks slow. I said, Corey, that's 1.5. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I've read that, listened to that book 
numerous times, every one of my clients I want to read that book, it's, he's very clever. And he always summarises his points by, let me put that on a bumper sticker. <laughs> and, and then he, it's, he's, the first time uh, I listened, um, the first few chapters, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I really like Vibing this guy, but mm. I'm like, the, the content is so good, I just came to love him. Mm. So Keith Cunningham, The Road Less Stupid, and uh, another book, The Advantage by Patrick Lencioni. Okay. Again, it's a hard book to read, but Patrick Lencioni, like I, I hope I'm selling it because it's worth reading, but he essentially looks at businesses have to be healthy and smart. And he said most people drive their business by being smart, building intelligence, and he said intelligence never leads to health, but health always leads to intelligence. Mm. And so he talks about the advantage is building uh, a really good culture with a really good team, people who are doing good work. Yep. He said, and then that will always lead to learning and growth and intelligence. Mm. It's That's really the theory of the book. It's worth reading. Yeah. Um, Do you so, know Sarah Blakely who invented yes, Spanx, the, yes, the, yes. the shapewear? Yeah. Her company brings me joy just by watching them. There was a great yeah. documentary on Netflix once and um, – she, she didn't hire people who necessarily had the skill. She was upskilling them, but they were just yeah. warm and they've been with her for years. The culture, they mm. wanted to be there. And I think that's probably part of the success yeah, of the company. Definitely. And in that, I've always hired first for character and second for skill. Yeah. Depending on what the role you're hiring for. And then yeah, skill is definitely important, but yeah. you, you can get you can learn skill. You can get that one bad egg that I always refer to as the cancer of the company. And if they're just really negative, they affect every person they pass in that business. Yeah, it's like yeast in a batch of dough. It's going to influence. Mm. Yeah. And some podcasts mm. that you would recommend? Okay. Again, I'm going to choose ones that most people may not have heard of. Um, the number one podcast is Acquired by two guys. They're two of the most impressive minds. I haven't heard of it. Uh, the podcast episodes are usually four hours long. That's why. They I are, can't. <laughs> you will not feel like it's four hours and you'll listen okay. to They're like documentaries. They're, well, it's fine because you can just pause and pick them back up. I do that with audio Seriously, books. if I only had one podcast to listen to for the rest of my life, it'd be really? quite They only bring out one episode a month. Uh, I would love them to bring out more, but they are the two most impressive business minds. They're only young guys yeah. in America and they – dissect a business, iconic, successful businesses. Is it acquired because they're acquiring existing businesses? When they when they started 10 years ago, mm. it was all about acquisitions. That's why they called it acquired. But okay. it's, it's morphed into like audible documentaries about mm. great businesses. Okay. So a couple, here's a couple of episodes and you can include these in your show notes or whatever you like. Great. I'll email them to you. But Thanks. Um, Hermes, the luxury brand, mm -hmm. Costco, Walmart, Visa. Oh, the Visa, the Visa episode is amazing. Oh, Louis right. Vuitton, that's a oh, that's episode you really need to listen. Yeah. Louis Vuitton's amazing. Nike. Um, Nintendo is a this, wonderful. When it's big names, you yeah. really want to listen to it, yeah. right? A um, Amazon, Berkshire Hathaway. Now, Berkshire Hathaway, they did four, so three four-hour episodes. It's 12 hours. Oh, my. My first episode that I listened to was Berkshire Hathaway, which is um, Warren Buffett, the, yeah, one yeah. of the wealthiest, best investors mm -hmm. ever. It's just phenomenal. They oh, are just, wow. I learned so much from listening to that. They do Sony, Taylor Swift. The episode on Taylor Swift is amazing. Now, I'm glad yeah. they do include that because I used to say years ago about Madonna. Love yeah. Madonna. Yeah. Madonna's not the greatest singer. No. Madonna is not the greatest dancer. Madonna was a very smart businesswoman oh, and she continuously evolved herself. And it was a different yeah. time where she's, you know, doesn't have the, the billion yeah. streams but she made the money off yeah. of tours and her CDs. Taylor Swift is doing exactly the same thing. Even Rihanna, yeah. who's a billionaire but not from yeah. her music, from her That's Fenty right. line. Yeah. And the, the episode on Taylor Swift I think is two years old so it, or three years old. It doesn't include. You know I'm going straight to that one. Before, it doesn't. <laughs> before Nike. It, it doesn't include the latest tour. Which, which is where she's made all of that, yeah. It's the business of Taylor. Mm. It's amazing. Smart woman. It's so good. Mm. Um, they do the NFL and the NBA. Fantastic. Oh, Alan, I'll be yeah. interested in those. I know people go, four hours. What? No, but I listen to audiobooks in, that are nine, 12 hours. So what's the difference? Invest in yourself. The, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of podcasts. Perfect. We'll check that one out. They what do. other Acquired. podcasts do you um, like? Now, how I built this and Wisdom from the Top, two different podcasts from the same guy. Um, okay. His name's Guy Raz. Yeah. The recent... 12, 24 months, I haven't listened because I didn't. I don't like the recent episodes. Okay. If you go back, they're awesome. So he does one on Lego. Okay. That's great. Um, Milk Bar, 
Uh, Uncle Nearest Whiskey, that's a great episode. The Lip Bar, Ben & Jerry's ice cream brand. Yeah. Um, they do uh, one on um, Jim Collins, Built to Last. Oh. Sun Bum, you know, the, oh, they, they do I one on Sun Bum. that company where you used to distribute their products. That's a great episode. Spin Master, they do like Sierra Nevada Brewing. They do so many. They're an hour, an hour and a half long. Don't listen to the recent ones. I think they're... All right, go back. I think they're trying to produce too many. Do you know what's yeah. funny with my podcast... My first episode by far has the most listens and I think people probably do what I sometimes do is when they find a new podcast, they go back to the beginning and listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So don't worry about the recent ones. Go to some of those ones I recommend. They're awesome. That's a podcast that I'd recommend. Excellent. Where can people find you if they want to know more? Uh, They can go to my website, which is whythenhow.com.au. I love that name too. I think I mentioned to you um, Simon Sinek always talks about. But you came up with it first. I've had that business for probably 15 years. I've had that business. I'm doing a next year a series on female entrepreneurs and I want to ask them why. Why this business? Because I find that the very best ones succeed because they've created something out of a passion Mm. or something that has benefited them or their family, not for Here's how I'm going to make money. So yeah. I think that's really important. And Instagram, but I will link everything in the show sure, notes yes. so everyone jump to the show notes. Yeah. I do like to end all my interviews by asking what is something you'll be doing in the next week to fill up your cup? Because I know we're talking businessy, but yeah. I'm all about investing in the self and, yeah. that, and that's, you know, time and everything. So yeah. what are you going to do? Well, the two things I, I do every week that just gives me energy is uh, spending time with family. Yeah. And that's the why of everything, really, yeah. family and friends. I will put a time aside every week where I just spend time by myself. Mm, that's um, important. Thinking, mm-hmm. just listening, learning. Like I might listen to a book or a podcast. I'll go for a walk. Yeah. Just letting th- thoughts percolate. Yes. Uh, I need to have that time. If I don't have that time, uh, I'm I'm not sharp. I'm not. It's a refresh. When I have uh, had visitors over, or if I, you know, like Christmas Day, I have to go for an hour walk on my own. I yeah. get very, I'm a real empath and I get, yeah. even though I seem social, I get so overwhelmed yeah. and energetically drained yeah. that that yeah. better than a nap is just yeah. going for a walk in nature. It just really fills yeah. up my cup. Yeah. 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 Like uh, everyone says I'm an extrovert, but I'm an introvert. introverted extrovert. I mean, introvert has to operate as an extrovert. Right. For my work. Okay. Usually. So. Yeah, because I call myself an introverted yeah. extrovert because I seem loud when you first meet me, but my recharge is on my own. Yeah. And I only have yeah. very short bursts and then I just have yeah. to smoke bomb from a party because yeah. <laughs> my, my battery's tapped out. Yep. Yep. That's brilliant. Darren, lovely to meet you and a pleasure to have yeah. you on today. Thank, Thank you so much for your contribution. My pleasure. Thank you. There is no resource more valuable than time. And I thank you for spending your time with us today. Your voice is so important and we would love to hear which topics you would like discussed in future episodes. Please reach out via Instagram at Can I Get a Refill Podcast or on our private Facebook group to let us know. If you enjoyed this or previous episodes, we would be so grateful if you could please subscribe, rate and review to help our voices continue to be heard. Catch you in the next episode.